I'd appreciate it if everyone would uh, stand with us and uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll then immediately after the Pledge of Allegiance have our invocation returned by Councilman Mike Thompson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please bow to me. Father, we come before you tonight and we thank you for the blessings you've given us and how you've watched over us and how you've cared for us. As we go into this new year, I pray that you'd be with us as a council, be with us as, as per, uh, uh, employees of the city, as people who serve the people of this town, be with the people of this town. Father, I pray for the well-being of Bonner Springs because it's through Bonner that we receive our well-being. Be with us now as we go into this new year. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And the first item of business uh, tonight is the oath of office for our incoming council members. And I'll turn this over to our city clerk, Amber McCullough. I almost got all the new ones on one side. That's why he's here. That makes me look bad, Tom. Yeah. Tie, tie, button down. Golf, yes, golf, golf, golf. This is the way. I, it's always, <laughs> they're normally crappy. It's close. This is true. Putting on airs. I'm going to do the suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> you look very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Overalls. Thank you. I'll raise your right hand and let me know your name. I will say your name. Do you solemnly affirm? I will say your name. If you want to request that of Amber. Is that a Freedom of Information Act? Doug? Yeah. Doug. George is leaving. Bye, George. Coops out. Well, I'd like to congratulate all of our new city, city council people, and we'll move on to uh, uh, the rest of the agenda. Uh, the next agenda item is... Uh, the opportunity for citizens' concerns about items not on tonight's agenda. If there's anyone that would like to stand and speak uh, on issues concerning uh, the City of Bonner Springs and address the City Council, you're welcome to. Um, these are, this is an opportunity for citizens to address the Mayor and City Council on the record in the open public meeting. No immediate action will be taken on these issues in the interest of fair and transparent city government. All issues will be investigated, researched, or addressed as necessary and with the consensus of the City Council placed on a future agenda. Is there anyone like to address the City Council this evening? Seeing none, we'll move right along to our consent agenda. This evening's consent agenda includes the minutes of the December 18th City Council meeting, claims for city operation, public housing authority claims, and designation of the city depository. Anything to pull by the city, by the citizens? Clarification from the council? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. Agenda as second. Moved and seconded. Vote please. Yes. 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 I think this is yours. <laughs> I, did, I figured out what it was finally. So. <laughs> it got passed to me. I <laughs> rolling right along to agenda item number seven, a final plat PT one seven one oh six for Canaan Center second phase. Staff. Good evening, Mayor. Donald Trump, City Planner. The, uh, this comes to you tonight. It is a four lot mixed high density residential commercial subdivision. 
the, the good news with this plant, when you look at it, it will complete pain and center. So when the tractor trailers come in, they'll have a way out. The, uh, the dedication is before you tonight for both the right of and the people. Uh, both the developer and the engineer here tonight. Very good, thank you. Anything to be added? Other questions, concerns <coughs> from the citizens? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Um, what else do I need to do? Nope, make a motion. I make a motion to, to accept, accept the dedication. Down. To accept the dedication uh, of easements and right of way as shown on the final plan. Very good. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Um, is there any questions, concerns, comments? We'll start down here on my left. No? Oh, just the you know, only comment is I'm glad we're finally going to move on this project and see some development up there. Yes. Yeah. Sir? Okay. Have any okay. questions or concerns, no, comments? No concerns nope. or comments. Sir? I, I uh, wanted to compliment, I like the larger size. Uh, Included that helps. <laughs> yeah, it, soon it's going to be electronic. Yeah, there's a citizen concern. Oh yes, <laughs> you're not feeding me fast enough. I'm not used to that. Um, seeing none, vote please. Yes. 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 Congratulations, thank you, and yeah, we're, is, uh, yeah, continued welcome to Bonner Springs, yeah, it's a nice place, and that area will benefit with this, so. Moving along to item number eight, the uh, zoning ordinance amendment, BSZP 127, open storage, section seven, article 22. Supplemental supplementary district regulations. Was that right? Twenty two? Yes. That, that is correct. The uh, this actually predates uh, our early work back as far back as I go nineteen eighty seven. The issue arose a couple of years ago or well, recently when Joe Fort actually lost the case because we found this regulation that, that really was more preventative than what people did in the late days. And what, what it was doing was granting salvage operators what kind of operations to be done. The thought back years ago was that it was going to help us get back to the top. It would help the accident for most salvagers for short term charge in less than nine days. The current code of ordinances, which is also in the <coughs> outside storage is current. Therefore, this comes to you tonight with the Planning Commission recommendation to repeal open storage section 7 and we have a main purpose. Thank you very much. Anything to um, questions or concerns from the citizens? Seeing none, move along to uh, Oh, oh, we're going to have a, uh, we'll, we'll make a motion, get a motion on the floor, then we'll have our time. So that's the very next thing I'm going to ask for is a motion um, concerning this. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve an ordinance to repeal Section 7 open storage under Article 14, uh, 24, 22, I'm sorry, 22 supplementary district regulations and renumber the remaining sections. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, questions, concerns, comments, and we'll start down here on this side, Mr. Shannon. Okay. Uh, yeah. Jordan Mack or Jordan and Mackey. Yes, I have a uh, couple concerns that I was worried about, uh, or I, I feel that it kind of um, uh, singles out my ward and a lot of the contractors that I know, and um, like tradesmen and Bonner. Uh, I like to do a little bit more research on it or see if there's some si style of rewrite that we could do for it rather than entirely nixing the grace period. Um, there's a, or it was stated in here that there was an 11-day grace period and it worried me that um, Mr. Sloan had mentioned 
that it could be used for anything, or I, well, I'm not quoting him exactly, but somebody had asked a question and whenever this was brought up and talked to by one of the citizens, and he was stating that it could be used at, on any lot regardless of zoning, um, whether it be, or, or an inference, whether it be commercial, residential, or anything. And I worry about the Pandora's box side of it, that it can be used uh, as a tit-for-tat motion or a neighbor's argument thing, as I had previously had happen to me last year. I had somebody turn me in over 31, 31 days out of 31 days in a month for a property that I had purchased. She was jealous that, or upset that I had purchased the property and turned me in every single day for the entire month to try and get me cited for something because we were trying to uh, rehab the property and she was upset that I had purchased it. She didn't like the price. And I worry that entirely nixing the full grace period could um, allow that to happen more often. Um, and I, I'd like to do either table it for right now to do further research on it since I wasn't on council or present whenever it was initially brought up, if possible. That's my full comments. Okay. Can you make a motion with the motion on the only before we decide on that? That's what I was kind of worried about. Uh, this motion would have to fail first, and then you'd be able to make that motion to table it or send it back or whatever you want to do. Okay. Anything else? Um, that's, I guess that's my biggest concern is the aspect that once it's pushed through, I know it would be much more difficult to try and get a grace period enacted for contractors or anybody, because I know a great majority of the houses in my ward are either being worked on by myself and a partner or as well as several other contractors who started coming into Bonner. And if we have, if we entirely nix, because part of the ordinance that's being removed is the storage of construction or construction related materials, and I worry that that opens it up to essentially anything. Like anybody could turn in, anybody trying to work on a, on a property as well as it had minor things on it like uh, bike storage, um, garden supply storage, and like several other things that it seems like it could be a very, very quickly become a tit for tat neighbor dispute style thing that they could use against each other. So this is in the resi residential zone? No, this is, there's, there's a misunderstanding here. But if you have, uh, uh, if you're a contractor and you live in a house in a anywhere in Bonner Springs, and you store all of your construction material on your yard, this would prohibit that. Correct. Correct. And that's the intent. The intent is residential, state, commercial, and uses And that that's that's not allowed now already. It's just this open storage allows 
some salvage for eight days and that was interpreted as being uh, too uh, permissive to not allow that open storage in other districts. Okay. Very good. Any other questions, concerns, comments? With that or in, in line with that, my worries was that I know several um, contractors who work with trees, concrete, and essentially anything where you would have larger equipment. If I, I know I've had several contractors that I've known that have had problems with it before getting turned in, if they bring, um, uh, say, a concrete mixer home, my interpretation of this is that they wouldn't be able to do that. If they had it stored in their backyard or something, and with as small as my ward is, I know at least five different contractors that live near where I'm at, and I worry about them getting attacked for this or having repercussions that's and not, not being able to do anything against But them. that's not permitted now. Right. Are they, with it, what is the storage part of it then? Could you have something on the property for um, 11 days and then you have to remove it? No, the issue is that the issue is residential pursuit is residential home. Correct. You're talking about contractors using residential property to store materials not being used on the site. Correct. You cannot do it. You cannot do it in the outside storage current. It has nothing to do with open. Contractors cannot put material not being used on site on residential property. You can't operate a business at the property. Correct. And have sinks and tubs and everything you've got to take to you live in 410 you're going to take it down the road to 330 you can't you can have it on 330 while you're working on 330 but you can't have it okay so if you're building a wall or retaining wall in your front yard and you're not a contractor so if, 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 as long as the material and the equipment is being used is being used on site then nobody's going to cite you if you're maintaining material in construction Yes, so I haven't been able to do much research on it, um, and I know I haven't been able to talk to Sloan about it. So I would like to be able to table it if possible, so I could talk to other people about it. But I know that it has to fail first, um, and I'm not against it. I understand the pretense of it and the purpose, um, but as I mentioned, I just worry about the Pandora's box side. That once it's done, it's done, and you can't. It's a lot harder to get something added in or a grace period or something like that and that's what I worry about because I am personally a contractor and um, I've worried about this before because I've had it come up and it's been used against me on several properties as he said I know that it it was helpful but I also know who to talk to and things like that and I worry about somebody coming in out of town because um, in the past three years I've had my construction trailer towed I've had one of my personal vehicles towed earlier this year, and I've lost, or I've had more things um, impounded or taken because of city stuff because they didn't know who to contact or whatever. I know that was my own personal doing, but I worry about the overreach side of it and people um, that don't have as many contacts as I do not being able to fight against this or being able to even understand what's going on. So uh, that's I mean, my full thoughts on it, is if we can do some more research, I'm not against it. I just worry about the wording of it. Very good. Sure. No question. Okay. Two quick questions. Um, how does this apply to people with livestock in the city? Livestock is permitted only in agriculture and zone property. So we have people in town that have chickens. Chickens are permitted under whatever. Right, accepting that they're permitted if there are a fence post or such <coughs> stuff that needs to be stored inside a building. Yeah, I can do that once I can. Okay. Excellent. Any agriculture is permitted in agriculture. So it falls under a different ordinance. I don't think 
chickens okay. for agriculture. No, I haven't said anything. Um, and this is, the enforcement of this is not Barbara driving around looking for infractions. This is only obvious or brought to the attention or it's brought to the attention again and we use common sense. If they're rehabbing the house, we know that right. we from the house. Nobody calls about that. And they're stored things not to be used on the site that's inappropriate under the current regulation. This is just uh, this smacks in the face of the property name is going to be which we did a short time. So it's only, this is only specifically residential zoning. That's he mentioned that some Well, the right. section that's being removed only applies to residential in section seven. If you go to Got it. That's all property zoning. Okay. That it already Correct. exists. Okay, so in one place we're saying it's not permitted, in another place we were saying they had nine days. Thank you. I'm now I am currently on the right page. Thank you. Don, sure. the, uh, you've got you can't store unless you're doing work on that particular house, but you can store it at your place even though. Okay, that's that's what I. You, not outside. I just want to make sure. Put in the garage and shut the door. Sure. No questions. They clarified that. Thank you, sir. Well, I appreciate all the input from, from Councilman Member, Member Mackey as well as from Mr. Sloan. I mean, it really comes down to is is that everybody who lives in a residential area has an expectation that it is a residential area. And if all of a sudden you've started introducing commercial into a residential area that's not zoned for it, then those people, their rights are somewhat being violated by the fact that you're running a commercial business out of a residential property. So I think in this particular instance, we have the regulation that qualifies it. This, there's no reason for that Section 7 to exist. Sure. Yeah, just one little bit of clarification. Uh, Somebody that's doing salvage or has inoperable motor vehicles, they've got nine days to get rid of it. Is that right? That's what they Or no days. Uh, the whole intent of this is because, as Sean mentioned, the property maintenance code was even in place. And this was in part of 1987. The intent is not to have salvage vehicles in residential. concern there was that if they're given nine days for nine days we have a different pile of scrap there than we started with because that gets another nine days right, right. so that that's, that's what they're that's taking out Questions? Please. No, I uh, Mr. Who was uh, Mr. Stevens brought up the comment that it was about the residential uh, side of the expectations of residential, and the reason one of the reasons why I brought it up is because the expectations of coming to Bonner versus living in Johnson County, or say living in an HOA, 
if you moved into an HOA, you're well aware of what the expectations are, and you know that you are moving into a board where it has specific expectations. But what I have heard from a lot of people that move into Bonner, and I know a lot of the contractors that move into Bonner, is that it is more lenient, that it is more blue collar neighborhood, and that's why I specifically mentioned my ward for Ward 1, like the downtown area of Bonner. They don't have 200,000 plus to go purchase a home in, say, Lee Valley, or to purchase a home in one of the other wards where you can get an acre, two acres of land. And of course, I would presume there's gonna be fence posts or there's gonna be lumber or concrete materials or things to store on those, that acreage. And you can do that and nobody's gonna say anything because it's uh, like not my, you don't pick on me, I won't pick on you type thing. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because I used to live in Ward 3 and almost every single person on my entire street, we all did the same thing. We were all blue collar. Each one of us had, we just had an understanding. It was our expectations that we knew, uh, like we all knew as neighbors and we didn't mind. Um, one of the gentlemen worked on cars and nobody cared. He worked on race cars. Another gentleman worked on uh, uh, restoration of historic, historic vehicles. Um, I would have, uh, construction materials or I build things on site and take them off things like that and it allowed us to be more of a community but we had um, some sort of issue where one of the city officials had to come in and all of us started getting cited because we had an understanding as uh, Mr. Stevens had mentioned we knew what, what our expectations were but then the city came in and we knew as Mr. Sloan had mentioned we knew what the city standards were but as a neighborhood we had different standards and we were able to act on that behalf as like our own neighborhood but with something like this I worry that it takes away those rights of a neighborhood to be able to do that type of thing it turns all of Bonner into one giant HOA and the city can just jump down somebody's throat if, if it's apparent to do so <clears throat> and um, I had the same sort of issue over when I lived in Waldo we all had as a neighborhood, we had no HOA, but we had understandings as neighbors to be able to do things, what we, whatever we were doing, and somebody could, say, build a chicken coop, or somebody could uh, have arts and crafts, or I, we knew a lady on the street that she was just the, the garden lady, and it wasn't city ordinance, or it went against it, but she had beautiful plants and everything in, the, um, in her yard and all of that, and uh, it, uh, it worries me that it takes away the uh, small town aspect and turns it into um, like the juggernaut aspect of Johnson County or uh, kind of pushes out the little guy. Like the little, the blue collar person can't come in and fight or have anything to say once this these types of um, ordinances are starting to be pushed into play. Um, and yes, as I said, I'm not against it. I understand it. I just worry about the wording of it and that it's just too vague and easily uh, attacked for, as I said, blue collar people or people within my ward, contractors and guys that I work with. Yes, I know that what the city standards are, but if a neighborhood agrees that, hey, Jimbo Joe has construction materials on his property and he owns uh, an eighth of an acre and nobody cares, then I don't see a problem with it and I don't understand why the city should be able to come in and make up a problem where there isn't one if there's no need to be. But at the same time, we can't allow neighborhoods to decide what rules to follow and the laws to follow. Of course. But, very good. Any other um, questions? I'm, I'm going to... No, I'd like to make one last comment, though, in regards okay. to that. Okay. Um, one of the things the government is supposed to do is to, is to protect the rights of the minority, the smaller group. And what you're saying is basically is that a larger group can dictate what occurs in a neighborhood. And what happens to that one or two individuals who says, I'm, I'm against nine or 10 other households. His only right, her only right would be to utilize the city ordinances. So that is one of the reasons why those ordinances exist. So that way, a larger majority group can't dictate to a smaller group. Well, I thank you. And I, I agree, it's a very, um, very thin line that we have to negotiate as as council people and uh, the zoning ordinances and, uh, primarily um, have a wealth of information 
and they were they're designed to protect all of us. Correct. And I I hear your desire uh, to have um, more uh, flexibility in neighborhoods, and as you get um, more into the different aspects, you'll see how easy that is to get away from the sure. rules and the the uh, desired effect. Uh, none of the zoning ordinances uh, try to be um, usurp uh, any power that this that anybody has to enjoy their their own rights and freedoms. <clears throat> The main thing is we're trying to protect everybody. So I, I hear what you're saying, and I've at, w at one time had very similar opinions or uh, desires, but when you look at the bigger picture, it's very difficult to ensure that ability. So my suggestion is if these are important uh, concerns to not just to you, uh, Jordan, not just to you as a city councilman, but also to your neighborhood, that those are the times that you would want to to uh, uh, enlicit that groundswell of community support to move away from current modern zoning ordinances to some type of other options. Do you see what I'm saying? Because with that Pandora's box, many things can happen. So you allow one guy to stack a few two by fours until he throws them back in his truck. The next guy has a water heater. Well, it's a good water heater. I'm going to hook it back up. But that water heater then breeds, you know, a worse tub and stack of shingles and, and everything values, and, yeah. and property values. And the little old lady that won't speak up to her neighbors, you know, has difficulty with it because she has to drive by it every day. So it, it's a it's a thin line that we have to travel and so um, I found a lot of value in the zoning ordinances and what is allowed and what isn't uh, concentrating on what is allowed gave me the opportunity to have my uh, lawn chairs out back and store them out back my lawn equipment there you go same way with my my uh, lawnmower you can put that in the backyard those kind of things give you that, those rights. Well, appreciate it. Yeah, with that, I was just, what I was bringing up with it is that it's going from something to nothing. I mean, Except they're, they're contradictory. Both of these already exist within the codes, but they contradict each other. But this was a former code that was done in, what, 1987? But they both are, are currently on the books as enforceable. I, un I understand that. That's so why all we're doing tonight is repealing the open storage section seven piece that contradicts the outside storage piece. We're not trying to. We're not well, we're we're talking about the open. Removing storage. the potential for a grace period and creating like a zero sum game, whereas the 1987 ordinance was created by the city and it wasn't just the codes that were uh, like blanketly accepted. But they're both on the books now. The 11410, yeah, 11410 exists with no grace period. Correct. And that's Section the one that we're wanting seven, to adopt, oh, right? No, it's already there. It's, it's already, already there. there. It's in, we're only repealing Section All we're seven. doing is taking away Section 7 open storage. So we're because only repealing the one with a grace period though. Right. And that's what I'm stipulating as my worry is okay. that we're, we're removing the aspect of any grace period as Mr. Uh, Reeves brought up if somebody has a car that's out of service or something instead of giving them say three or four days we're giving them no days whatsoever no uh, it would be a salvage car is what they address the salvage vehicle not a not a car that has a flat tire not a car that happens to need a battery that um, um, those are two different things I've read it as inoperable vehicles. Is it specifically for salvage vehicles? That that was my interpretation. Isn't that? I thought it was just inoperable vehicles. Well, that's what's being proposed. So the open storage is being proposed. Right. Yeah. Primarily the salvage items that are out of the What is on the books currently is the second case where all these items are. Outside, all of those items is to contain outdoor 
to essentially inoperable vehicles. So if tomorrow there was a vehicle sitting, even if it was licensed and all of that, we could cite them and they'd be cited regardless. It, and if it isn't licensed or? Of course. Well, and I understand those. If it's not licensed or something like that. We've got a section. Is there any grace period for that whatsoever before it's no, taken or towed? So currently, as it stands, though, I know it's a uh, it's a double com contradiction or like a catch twenty two, but there is a grace period currently. Even though the, ordin the other ordinance contradicts it, there's still a grace period of nine days, right? There's a grace period to the extent that it's covered within the scope of storage and scrap materials, not the household goods and furniture and so on. Um, and that's strictly the residential areas. It's not in commercial areas. One of the citizens that asked the question about that, though, it worried me that Mr. Sloan stated that it could be used in any zoning anywhere. And let me clarify the issue came up because he was misreading the planning commission was misreading the issue to Mr. Hall of the county. Mm -hmm. He was referencing that 11 410 outside storage, not open storage. The outside storage. that I wasn't on council before that, so that's why I'm right. stipulating it. Yeah, we haven't seen this before either. Yeah. This is all new to all of us. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So yeah, I'm not against it. I would just like to see if we could possibly do more research on it, because, I mean, as quite a few people have brought up different points, rather than just mixing it right away to push it out, it would be great if we could do some more research on it or talk about it, but I know that the motion's already been passed, so I would ask that you guys um, say no for this just so that we can talk about it or elaborate on it to some degree. Um, uh, that's my two cents. Very good. Thank you guys. All right. Anything, anything else, Mr. Shannon? I didn't know if you had anything else. Not seeing nothing else. <laughs> but we, we beat the dead horse, yep. I understand. Steven? Yes. Shannon? Yes. 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 Absolutely not. No. Yes. 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 On to item number nine. Um, this is uh, uh, Lines Park Trail Project <coughs> final payment. Staff. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Any questions or concerns from the citizens on the trail part? <laughs> Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. 
Mr. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to accept change order number three and approve final payment to Little Joe's Asphalt in the amount of $25,316.22 for the Lions Park truck project. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, questions, concerns, comments, and we'll start down here. I'm just curious, were they able to mediate all of the problems with the, there were some soft spots and all of that? Yes. Yeah, so that Is that was part of one of these change orders? I saw that. Yeah. Okay. to uh, item 10, the city manager's report. Thank you. Just a quick reminder that um, Monday, next Monday, the Good, and we'll uh, move on to city council items. We'll start down here, sir. I was just nice to see in the business updates that um, somebody is progressively working towards keeping the Dollar General yeah. in town. Sitting. That's it. Uh, do you want to shoot in all individual council members before the next meeting, or are you just doing groups? Take a picture. Shoot means something else. Beg your pardon. Would you like to take <laughs> pictures? <laughs> Everybody? Okay. Um, That's not just semantics. <laughs> wow. I don't live in that world yet. Sorry. Um, can we please add city council meetings to the calendar on the website? Okay. Done. None. Along with the uh, next Monday, I've uh, been asked to. Uh, provide a reminder about Martin Luther King. It's, uh, I guess, called Memorial Celebration at the uh, First Christian Church on Monday the 15th at 1 p.m. And after that, there will be a spaghetti supper that is served, and tickets can be bought at that service. And uh, a lot of the uh, high school or the school kids have really worked hard and are going to participate in this. So uh, they'll, have a, they'll be providing honor and an inspiring program for them. What, where did you say that was taking place at? At the First Christian Church, 13, uh, 1300, uh, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. And then dinner immediately to follow, or does it have a later start time? Uh, no, I think it's immediately to follow, and tickets can be bought at the beginning or end of the service. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Mackey? Well, thank you very much. And uh, I was going to make mention of that same. Uh, the Martin Luther King Day uh, celebration. Um, uh, I'll be bringing, uh, uh, Mayor McTaggart and I will be bringing proclamations. So uh, um, I look forward to being at that uh, service again this year. Um, and uh, little business updates, those, those uh, sorry to see uh, one store leave, but it sounds as if uh, as soon as one leaves, another one um, opens right up. So. Um, the interest in downtown Bonner Springs continues to grow. Um, those uh, those uh, specialty retail merchants um, are a, a great group, and uh, it's great to see that uh, there's such interest, as well as the continued support of the Dollar General for this whole into Bonner Springs. It's a, a big uh, asset. Um, uh, since our last meeting I had an opportunity to uh, speak with um, 
other local mayors and uh, there's been a little bit of turnover across the Wyandotte and Johnson County area and uh, it's nice to see um, the uh, uh, people that are the new people interested in local government and that's so important and I uh, I again uh, congratulate those newly elected and thank all those that have uh, uh, other council members uh, for putting in the time that you do um, th there was a terrible accident today on 7 highway that caused the, the 7 highway to be closed for an extended period of time um, uh, our condolences go out to the family it was a fatality wreck I don't know that the uh, individual has been identified yet and I don't know if they're from Bonner Springs or not but um, We've enjoyed quite a uh, mild winter so far, but uh, when we are impacted with um, difficult weather, traveling weather, um, we need to uh, remind ourselves to give ourselves plenty of time. Um, black ice, although we talk about it a lot, uh, sneaks up on everyone. So uh, please encourage all of um, our families and friends to be careful. Um, I don't know if that was the cause or not, but it certainly, uh, certainly couldn't have done anything but add to the severity of the situation um, uh, also the this is the season of water main breaks if you happen to see a water main break please notify the city um, as soon as you are aware of it the mobile app is great for that yes I did that. <laughs> and uh, um, it's a challenging time not only for the water pipes but for the the men and women who fix those water pipes and so uh, uh, give them a wide berth and make sure uh, you're very careful in those areas too. We'll be uh, monitoring all those uh, breaks and repairs and hopefully getting um, final complete um, hard surface on top of them as soon as we can. Uh, we're working towards uh, decreasing the amount of time those areas are uh, temporarily patched. Unless anyone else has any Questions or concerns for me? Yes? I was just going to add one more thing. Um, former, former council member, who reminded me of this. Um, if you're headed north on uh, uh, 7 Highway, you'll actually notice as you're coming across the bridge and you can do the north side. Uh, Betsy Smith, uh, our tourism coordinator, is able to do that spot walk out of the city. So we're going to do it all the time. So wow, that's so good. Now it's a good no. Where's it at? Yeah. Right where the Ashburn sign is. Coming across seven Oh, across just seven. south of 32. Yeah. Oh, that's. Yeah. I was thinking up north. That's all. Good. Good. Oh, that's great. You yeah. should probably stop and yeah. take selfies yeah. with it, though. Oh, that's super. Uh, that's that's always been a, a prime spot, you know, and. Uh, exactly to advertise Bonner Springs so <laughs> coming into Bonner Springs it's the one that had the eyeglasses on it I've been so also I continue to get lots of compliments on our uh, uh, digital sign uh, at uh, Metropolitan uh, the the little bit of information that it provides is uh, oftentimes those blurbs that get missed in all the other media outlets that we support so uh, uh, continue to use the app or the website or the all the things that we do Facebook and all that and thank you for the Facebook coverage over the holiday um, with um, the City Hall closures and the late trash pickup um, trash is fine this week but next week it'll be late a, a day across the city so other than that seeing nothing else we're adjourned